Benjamin Williams. Uh, I work for National Grid. I'm a journeyman lineman. I've worked here for a little over six years. We maintain and build some transmission and distribution systems basically. So these poles you see and all the work we're doing today, this is just one of our daily jobs that we get. Uh, I mean, we're setting poles every day, transferring poles basically, and building new construction for new customers. Today, we set a 45 foot pole. Uh, basically, this is gonna be for a customer building a house up on this hill, uh, 1,100 feet away from here. So. Basically, right now, this is uh, 4,800 volts, those top two wires you see, so it's a delta system. So, once we got the pole transferred, we hung a ratio transformer, which then takes that 4,800 volts and steps it up to 7,620 volts, which will then feed an underground cable to that customer's transformer. And then from that transformer, we'll step that down from 7,620 volts to your household distribution electric, which is 120, 240. Well, if you think about it, uh, most people probably couldn't really do their daily tasks without electricity. So it's a pretty important factor for us to maintain these systems and then keep improving them as technology changes. You know, we're getting more and more customers, so therefore there's more load on all of our feeders basically coming out of our substation. So there's always, we're always improving things, you know, running bigger wire, uh, putting in bigger transformers for stuff. But I mean, you wouldn't, society today wouldn't function without electricity. For us, you know, when a storm comes through, we try to keep the, keep the lights on the best we can and get people going back as fast as possible. The B alignment, you'll go through an apprenticeship. National Grid, it's five and a half years before you top out. So basically, in that apprenticeship, you have to have a Class A CDL driver's license. So I mean, say you get hired here at 18, you can't get a Class A, you gotta be 21 years old. But the company will work with you, you know, you'll have your Class B, say you get hired at 19. Once you turn 21, you'll go and get your Class A. So that's one of the responsibilities. Uh, you know, you gotta be prepared to work in a job like this. You know, you gotta be ready to work all hours of the day and night. You know, and it's it's not for everybody, but if you're hard working, and I mean, it's a very rewarding career, but you are gonna spend a lot of time with these guys that you work with, you know, they're your second family. So, you know, I love coming to work every single day. You know, I go on vacation and I'm like, I'm ready to get back to work. But it's just because I love everybody I work with, you know. To wanna do this for a living, you gotta just be ready to work. You know, you're gonna work long, tiring hours. But like I said, it's very rewarding. You know, if you feel great when you get someone's lights back on, there's really not a better feeling. But what's nice about this work is that not every day is the same. You know, you're not going to a cubicle every day and doing the same thing, typing on a keyboard, you know. Right now we're out here in the country, you know, setting the pole, doing all this work. And then 20 minutes from now, we could get a trouble call for a working structure fire or something, but we gotta go kill the electric for that building. So no day is ever the same. And uh, so you really can't plan for a day today because you know you'll come in one morning and you'll be having your coffee and at 7:30 there'll be six broken poles on 5 and 20. So no day's ever the same, and that's what makes this career just so unique. You know, there's so many different. You know, some days you're working sub transmission, climbing towers. Some days you're doing distribution, and then tomorrow you could be doing all underground. So it's really just a diverse job basically I mean there's nothing's ever the same I mean our our practices are the same you know we set the pole the same way but you know how you set this pole was nice and easy nice and open you might get into a more you know suburban city like area where there's 15 phone cables on there and you're just you got to make stuff work to get that pole in the ground so every day is different and it's like I said it's some days are more challenging than others but all in all no day's the same. Uh, growing up, my father was a union tree trimmer. Pretty much every male in my family is a union tree trimmer. So I was a shoe in to do tree work. But uh, a few of my father's friends were linemen, and I was just always fascinated with it. And, uh, you know, I, I can't really say what made me want to get into it because I was doing tree work for a while. But I kind of just woke up one day and I was like, you know what, I'm going to go to line school and try to get the apprenticeship at some utility, at some electrical company. And I just, Went from there and luckily the stars aligned and everything has worked out for me. So once you graduate high school, if you do want to pursue uh, becoming a lineman for a career, uh, for say for National Grid, they want you to have either a climbing certificate, 
which is basically where, you know, out of high school or whenever you decide to go to a climbing school, basically, you'll go to that climbing school. I think they're about three months long. You'll train through there. You'll learn how to climb, learn about the safety and probably the basics of electricity. And then once you get that climbing certificate, that is one thing National Grid requires you to have before you can get hired here. Now, your second option would be, which I know uh, Erie Community College does it, out, by, out towards Buffalo. They have, uh, I believe it's a two-year electrical program that National Grid is actually somewhat partners with. So basically, you'll do their program. I believe you go to like a two-week climbing school where actual, some National Grid uh, retirees will go and teach the students there how to climb and that is one other way to get into our company but it's really one of the two there aren't many I did four years in the Marine Corps uh, was signed up to go to uh, climbing school down in Georgia and I ended up getting an opportunity to go work for Fairport Electric which is a small municipality so I was at Fairport going through their apprenticeship and uh, I was pretty lucky fortunate the line school instructor that taught at Fairport the Northeast Public Power Association was a retired National Grid Niagara Mohawk lineman. So he kind of knew I'd been trying to get into National Grid. I was trying to get into National Grid for like three years when uh, I finally got a phone call for an interview. And uh, so when I got called and they told me my interview date, they said to bring my climbing certificate from a climbing school. And I was like, well, sir, I'm sorry, I don't have one. I was like, I have full top rescue certifications and all that. And I was like, I'm in uh, the Northeast Public Power Association. Uh, apprenticeship and uh, Bill Hessen's my instructor so it all worked out for me basically Bill Hessen made a phone call and I got an interview so so the classes that I would recommend that will benefit you in pursuing a career like this would be uh, would be math you know there is math involved in electrical theory um, now technology so computer classes even to that because now everything is switching to electronics so a lot of our stuff we do is on iPads. You know, once you become a journeyman lineman here at National Grid, you get an iPad, and it's got everything on it. It's got our standards, our electrical operating procedures. You know, we do our time on it. You know, you're filling out everything on that iPad. Uh, the third, and I'd say probably the most important, would be you know do some sort of skill trade through BOCES. Um, this is a very mechanical job. You know, you're, you're not saying you're turning wrenches like a mechanic. But you are turning wrenches in this line of work. You know, you've got a measurements, using drills, impact tools, hydraulic tools, you know, and definitely I would say BOCES is number one. Get some hands on, because that's what this job is. It's all hands on. It's you're not sitting behind the desk. Okay, so some soft skills that would definitely benefit you in this line of work. Uh, dedication, you know, this is a job where you're dependent on every single day. It is a dangerous job, but you can do it safely. You know, we have practices that make this line of work safe. You gotta be willing, you know, it's not a job where you can say, oh, we'll fix it tomorrow. It's a job, it's gotta get fixed right then and there. So you gotta be dedicated to this career. Like I said, you're gonna work many hours. You're gonna spend a lot of time with the guys you work with and you'll consider them family. Um, another thing is just a good work ethic. You know, nobody, nobody wants to work harder than someone because they're lazy so good work ethic is going to get you and if you have a good work ethic here it's going to go noticed and you'll climb the ladder through your progression you'll keep progressing in those steps through the apprenticeship uh, communication you know we do deal with a lot of customers where you know you just sometimes you got to suck it up and say yeah the customer's right you know they don't know how to do your job but in careers like this and I don't care what the career is you have to respect the customers you got to be nice to them um, you got to respect your co-workers, you know, you can't be bullying anybody. So, dedication, respect, good work ethic, dude, that'll pretty much get you anywhere. The attention to detail, that is good because uh, I'm pretty picky when I'm building a pole. You know, I square all my washers, you know, I'm a, I'm a professional in what I do for a living. So I try to make my work look as nice as possible, you know, I got to drive by it for the next 30 years, so I want to make sure it looks good. But uh, that would definitely help, you know, it's take pride in your work with anything you do, whether you're working, you're remodeling a bathroom at home or you're building power lines, you know, take pride in your work, you know, it's, that's, that's you, that's got your name on it. Okay, so some of the benefits here at National Grid are uh, basically you get your paid apprenticeship, you know, you may pay to go to your climbing school to get your climbing certificate or you may pay to go to that electrical program through ECC or whatever college does it. 
But here, when you're training here, you get paid to train. You're getting paid 40 hours a week. Uh, there's obviously overtime involved in that. You know, even as an apprentice, you get offered overtime. Um, I have a 401k. I have health insurance, dental. Uh, I think I said paid vacation. And then there's also a lot of other little things that people might not think about. Like say uh, there's a charity that you're involved with. Uh, National Grid will match whatever you raise for that charity, if it's approved charity. So the company's really good you know, to the public community and everything like that, which is great. You know, a lot of things that a lot of companies might overlook and not do, but here at National Grid, those are things that they do, and you know they do take care of their employees. And uh, here at National Grid, we also have a stock option where if you're an employee at National Grid, you actually buy National Grid stock at a discounted price. And basically you can set it up so 5% of your paycheck goes into that stock option plan and they'll just buy stock for you over and over. There's a lot of options to actually have a good retirement. Once you retire, the health is cheap. You know, you still maintain your dental and all that. So it's a good career here. So the best thing about my job is uh, luckily I work with a great group of guys. So, you know, we have fun at work. You know, we still work, we get our jobs done, but we all like each other, so we have fun, and that's what makes it great. Another thing is, like I said, no day's the same. You know, I mentioned earlier, you're not you're not going to the same cubicle Monday through Friday from 9 to 5. You know, we're 7 to 3.30, and it's a different day every day. Uh, the worst part about this job, so the long hours. You will work long hours doing this for a living. Uh, you will be away from your family, but like I said, I have a second family here, so it's not that bad. Um, and then like I said, when it's 2 a.m., going into Christmas Day or New Year's Eve and the wind's blowing and it's negative 10 outside and you're 45 feet up a pole in your hooks, those could be some bad days, but luckily you work fast, get it done safely, and uh, you come back down and get back in the truck and warm up for a little bit. So the thing that probably surprised me the most was just, you know, like I said earlier, it's, it's a brotherhood, you know. You work with some really great guys every day and you know you consider them family and that's probably you know I, I did four years in the Marine Corps so that was a whole different brotherhood but and that's another thing that really pushed me into this career was the fact that it is another brotherhood you know I, we're part of the IBEW which is the National Brotherhood of Electrical Workers All right. and uh, when I say brotherhood for say the IBEW that is guys and girls you know I work we work with women every day we work with guys every day so this, like I said, this career is for anybody if you're willing to put in the hours and work hard for it.